Many of you ever heard of this one?
just plain torture. When Sue Ellen read her page, or Tommy Bob read his page, they read so easily that Trisha would watch the top of their heads to see if something was happening to their heads that wasn't happening to hers. And numbers were the hardest thing of all to read. She never added anything right. Line the numbers up before you add them, the teacher would say. But when Trisha tried, the numbers looked like a stack of blocks wobbly and ready to fall. She just knew she was dumb. Then one day, her mother announced that she had gotten a teaching job in California, a long way from the family farm in Michigan. Even though her grandma and grandpa were gone, the little girl didn't want to move. Maybe, though, the teachers and kids in her new school wouldn't know how dumb she was. She and her mother and brother moved across the country in a two-tone 1949 plant. It took five days. But at the new school, it was the same. When she tried to read, she stumbled over words. The cat, cat the er, er, ran. She was reading like a baby in the third grade. And when her teacher read along with them and called on Trisha for an answer, she gave the wrong answer every time. Hey, dummy, a boy called out to her on the playground. How come you are so dumb? Other kids stood near him and they laughed. Trisha could feel the tears burning in her eyes. How she longed to go back to her grandparents' farm in Michigan. Now Trisha wanted to go to school less and less. I have a sore throat, she'd say to her mother, or I have a stomach ache. She dreamed more and more and drew more and more, and she hated, hated, hated school. Then, when Trisha started fifth grade, the school was all a buzz. There was a new teacher. He was tall and elegant. Everybody loved his striped coat and slip gray pants. He wore the neatest clothes. All the usual teacher's pets gathered around him. Stevie Joe and Alice Marie, Davy and Michael Lee. But right from the start, it didn't seem to matter to Mr. Falker which kids were the cutest, or the smartest, or the best at anything. Mr. Falker would stand behind Trisha whenever she was drawing and whisper, This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Do you know how talented you are? When he said this, even the kids who teased her would turn around in their seats and look at her drawings. But they still laughed whenever she gave a wrong answer. Then, one day, she had to stand up and read, which she hated. She was stumbling through a page in Charlotte's Web, and the page was going all fuzzy when the kids began to laugh out loud. Mr. Fokker, in his plaid jacket and his butterfly tie, said, Stop! Are all of you so perfect that you can look at another person and find fault with her? That was the last day anyone laughed out loud or made fun of her, all except for Eric. He, sat, he had sat behind Trisha for two whole years, but he seemed almost to hate her. Trisha didn't know why. He waited by the door of the classroom for her and pulled her hair. He waited for her on the playground, leaned in her face, and called her Toad. Trisha was afraid to turn any corner for fear Eric would be there. She felt completely alone. The only time she was really happy was when she was around Mr. Falker. He let her erase the blackboards. Only the best students got to do that. He patted her on the back whenever she got something right, and he looked hard and mean at any kid who teased her. But the nicer Mr. Fokker was to Trisha, the worse Eric treated her. He got all the other kids to wait for her on the playground, or in the cafeteria, or even in the bathroom, and to jump out and call her stupid, or ugly, and Trisha began to believe them. She discovered that if she asked to go to the bathroom just before recess, she could hide under the inside stairwell during free time and not have to go outside at all. In that dark place, she felt completely safe. But one day at recess, Eric followed her to her secret hiding place. Have you become a mole? He laughed. 
and he pulled her out into the hall and danced around her. Dumbbell, dumbbell, naggedy old dumbbell. Trisha buried her head in her arms and curled up in a ball. Suddenly, she heard footsteps. It was Mr. Falker. He marched Eric down to the office. When he came back, he found Trisha. I don't think you'll have to worry about that boy ever again, he said softly. What was he teasing you about, little one? I don't know, Trisha shrugged. Trisha was sure Mr. Falker believed that she could read. She had learned to memorize what the kid next to her was reading, where she would wait for Mr. Falker to help her with a sentence, and then she'd say the same thing that he did. Good, he would say. Then one day, Mr. Falker asked her to stay after school and help wash the blackboard. He put on music and brought out little sandwiches as they worked and talked. All at once, he said, let's play a game. I'll shout out letters. You write them on the board with the wet sponge as quickly as you can. A, he shouted, and she wiped a watery A. Eight, he shouted. She made a watery eight. Fourteen, three, D, M, Q, he shouted out. And he shouted out many, many letters and numbers. Then he walked up behind her, and together they looked at the board. It was a watery mess. Trisha knew that none of the letters or numbers looked like they should. She threw the sponge down and tried to run. But Mr. Falker caught her arm and sank to his knees in front of her. You poor baby, he said. You think you're dumb, don't you? How awful for you to be so lonely and afraid. She sobbed. But little one, don't you understand? You don't see letters or numbers the way other people do.